This is Paul. Welcome back to my channel. Weekly Canada. Yes, a new slack look. How do I look? Let me know in the comments down below. Mustache is fine, dandy. The beard is completely gone. I didn't even leave a little friend here. Don't worry about the birds. They they are just dickheads. They just make these noises from 6 a.m. in the morning. That's why I'm awake right now in this time of day, 9 a.m. and recording this video for you guys. Yes, the birds are the problems. Well, I can go chase them off, but I'll be looking like a fucking fool. So I'm not gonna do that. So if it disturbs you, just 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 just, just listen to my voice. You know, let let my voice be the anchor that guides you through this video. Why am I talking like this? I don't know. So today's Monday. So before you go like, ah oh, man, don't make me remember it. It's a fun day for me. Speculation, speculative Monday. We start the week. with some spicy new things yes so on the one hand it's all speculation so you got to take it with a pinch of salt it might not even happen 100% so before you being a dickhead just just think about that for a moment it cannot happen it will not happen but on the off chance point not 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 1% it might happen and when it does i'll be laughing in your face yeah whoever you are so without much further ado Let's just get into this video. Before we get into this video, however, that didn't make that didn't make any sense. Sorry. Well, this is going to be yet another series within a series. I talked about it um, for Age of Empires 4. I'm making certain videos, uh, which I have stopped right now because I'm working on a script. This is unscripted. Don't get me wrong. But the last one was not unscripted as well. So I'm just trying to, you know, inc incorporate both scriptness and non-scriptness, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, so I'm working on a script for the next Age of Empires 4 video, which will be out two, three weeks later probably. Uh, so right now I'm going to be talking about something that I already talked about last week, but then just want to make more of, just want to talk more of. Stop it, bird! Come on, just like. Wantedly being a moron, wantedly being a dickhead. It knows that I'm recording. It's like, <laughs> well, doesn't make any sense. Now, uh, I talked about Switch game for Pokemon and how can it be kind of like new things. Uh, in that speculation video, I just talked about how it, it can be even Gen 4 remakes, but I wanted these changes in the Gen 4 remakes, and uh, a lot of people seem to like it. And then they talked about how they want to see their own version of the games. Uh, certain people were gave their ideas and people like you know what this is not going to come next year it's going to be coming 2019 uh 99% i think this game is going to be coming out on 2018 because um they bought tickets the game of the year was that have been happening they bought tickets for nintendo fans especially they got like these certain people uh it's not a big deal but last year this happened they got the tickets and then they introduced kind of like showcased uh, sun and moon they said okay this is going to be the game that is going to be coming out and a lot of fans have been surprised and uh, those fans were in that seat and they kind of introduced before uh, the nintendo treehouse at e3 before that they did an nintendo direct and then they explained all the things that are going to be there about the game and then e3 happened and then they released the game and so on and so forth same thing happened this year with ultra sun and ultra moon so i think them buying these tickets and then having fans in the audience that means like when they showcase how legend of zelda uh, and when they announce switch such sort of thing so probably that's going to be happening but i don't i don't think it's going to be releasing like legend of zelda was in 2018 mid march or april i think it's going to be way late october end or november even and i think it's going to be a banger before that uh, we all know that this is the last of the 3DS games and this is kind of like the switch game is going to be a new start and the veterans have been working on this game and i want to speculate certain changes that i wanted to see in these things and i thought that last video was going to be it it is like i don't want to go into this uh, video then talk about certain things i just don't i just didn't want to do it but this same time Uh, I really want to talk about how I want to see certain changes in the Pokemon games. A lot of people from the community have been talking about it. A lot of people, fans have been talking about it. Uh, or people who doesn't involve in the community talks about it. So I just took all of them and then just like having my own version of those things uh, as speculation. Probably uh, this is never going to happen. They're not going to change anything. They're just going to upgrade their graphical level that stated with 3DS and then push the system of Switch and then boom. Then it's going to be a new version again and go on and so forth. but i really want to see a change in the franchise because they have to understand at the end of the day people who are playing this are adults than kids and that's kind of like the meme worked out really well because uh, call of duty expectations are adult but 
playing played by kids and uh, Pokemon is the opposite of that. That's kind of true because uh, people have grown up with Pokemon. That's what Pokemon company needs to get to their head. People have grown up with your game. They have grown up. They are grown up. That's like the key word here. And uh, if they don't acknowledge that anytime soon, they still they are making games for kids. And then if they don't acknowledge it, it's like gonna be like a little bit of a trouble. Uh, and uh, the example that I'm gonna be giving for it right now is gonna be weird because it's a Pokemon game and I'm be talking about weird things. But it's like a couple trying to kiss, but they don't know what they're doing, so it's not turned out really well. But they love each other, so it's like kind of worked out. And that couple being a sandbox and open world. That's been Pokemon games till now. They try to be open world as much as they possible, and then they tracked it down to like sandbox kind of like things. Uh, open world in case of like you can catch whatever Pokemon you want, you can have whatever team you want, you can do whatever uh, he whatever the hell you want. Like uh, you can have a mono monologue or it's just a lock. You can have whatever you want to be in that team. Same time, sandboxes you can't go anywhere. You just have to follow the line. You know, you just have to follow the story. You can't uh, deviate from that line. If you deviate, boom, there's something there, um, something like as stupid as possible. Ah, you can't go to that route because I am on my Pokemon trying to search uh, certain things here. So just go that side. Go that side. Sometimes like absolutely like that's just the dumbest reason you know i have this pokemon it's like go away it's like the little kid that's like oh i'm trying to find a pokemon here uh you can't go this side dude i'm a fucking adult just move away and then you can go on the side so um that's the thing like they have to be clever about it so if it's an open world you just like give your fans you give your players just the torch life you know you can do whatever you want just you know just get the starter pokemon the first 10 minutes would be the tutorial version and this is what shogo talked about i think in its twitter it's just like said dude i'm i had it enough like uh, i'm a grown ass man playing pokemon i don't have to say uh, you don't have to teach me a lot of things because i've been playing for seven generations now that's the thing that i want to talk about like you do, i don't need a tutorial that's give me an option at least at the start of the game whether you want tutorial on or not so for little kids or you know who are not familiarized with the franchise will just select yes i want a tutorial uh what you gotta say for me explain all things to those guys and to us it's like i don't want it i wanted the tutorial off that's it just like uh, you wake up go there and just get a pokemon and then start your adventure nothing else no, there's not going to be any hand holding that when that happens that that's what i want to see that's the first speculation that i want to make make it more fan friendlier just like people make it more community friendly the people who have been playing in the community who have grown up knows how to play the game so just don't teach us how to play these games uh with your hand holding the next thing is just own it own one thing i'm gonna be sandbox you are gonna go in a line all the time even make the pokemons like that just uh, in this route, there's like six Pokemon. You have to catch one Pokemon at least because in the next gym or two gyms later, if you don't have this Pokemon, you're not going to win. Uh, if you don't have this move on your Pokemon, you're not going to win. Uh, it's going to be at least really, really hard. Just make those kind of changes. Uh, that's what we wanted to see. Just own that you're a sandbox game or just own your an, an open world game. Just uh, if you have a fire starter, you don't have to go to that gym, which is rock, rock type or a ground type. Else you can go somewhere, someplace else. You can catch certain Pokemon there and then come back and then go to this gym. Why can't we do that? This is done in the anime. Why can't you do it here? That's where the sandbox comes in. It's like a tuffle between uh, certain people. It's like, no, I can't have this. This is my turf. I can't have this in my turf, those sort of things. Uh, I really don't want to see that in a Pokemon game. I just want to enjoy it my way, you know. And I'm a fan of the franchise. I've been playing this for seven generations now. It's just like, you know what, just just give me my stuff. I want to pick up my starter and then I want to go have my journey. I can do whatever I want and just like go wherever I want and then do all the things that I want. Will you let me do that? Kudos. But if you don't, it's like a situation where like, ah, uh, it's a sandbox again. But sometimes like open world, all right, I got you. And then it's like sandbox. Oh my god, it's like a fight between the heart and the mind, which doesn't fit. You know, it doesn't fit any time. And uh, I would say just own it. Just own one thing. I'm gonna be sandbox. No, I'm gonna be open world. First things. And uh, the difficulty levels have always been like um, stats have always been great, but at the same time. I think the starters deserve some sort of love if you think about it. 
um, people make these series where uh, which starter is best for you or which starter is going to be worse for you you know top five strongest starter top five weakest starter um, I think the ideology of starters came from they are unique in a way that are kind of be giving away to people because they are easily friendly you can easily train with them and stuff like that I understand all those things but when you consider the pseudo legendaries uh, which is going to be the best example that I can give it's just like one pokemon in every generation except for third gen because it's a deck it has two, two um, you know it has two pseudo legendaries if I'm not wrong yeah metagross and salamence bastards they both have mega evolution as well somebody is fucking um somebody is fucking uh, just noticed it like all this been like a third generation is best like all the starters have mega evolution to okay that's all other different video all right forget about that so these sort of like pokemons are unique in their own way so if you think about god charm it's faster it's physical attacker gudra is especially fucking defensive it's like holy crap bulky as hell and if you have Tyranitar, which is defensive in terms of like physically, and you have Dragonite, which is faster as well, and then you have Salamence, which is stronger on all fronts, and Metagross, same thing. They all are unique, and the stats are unique as well. I think it's 600, if I'm not wrong, 600 or 600 plus. All of them have these things, but it's different on the way both. So in eight generation, they're just like, you know what, it's gonna be a reboot of sort, and then all the three starters, we are not going to make it like easy, uh, medium or hard based on the starters. That doesn't make any sense to me because I want to pick my Charmander and then I want to go have my journey. But I can't do that because the first two gyms are rock and water. And the third one is electric. You tell me how am I going to have my journey go. Yeah, I can catch other Pokemons. But what I want to make like just my starter Pokemon through the entire game. That's an open world thing as well, right? But I can't do that because I'm going to die. Yeah. So just imagine that. So kind of like change all of that. Um, I don't want to say to my fans like, oh, if you pick this Pokemon, you can have everything smoothly go. Um, it doesn't... It's like the cool looking Pokemon is going to be the hardest one to have. That, you know, that doesn't make any sense because all the ones are good and unique in their own way. I can't say that to anything else. Now, if you do that for all the other Pokemons that you find in Route 1, Route 2, do so. But for the starters, just the three Pokemons. Just three Pokemons, to be honest with you. Just three. Just three. Just three. So, just like make a unique stats, um, be it like 525. Overall stats for the base starters, 525. All across the board, they are gonna have different things. For example, if you have, a, if you want a grass starter, it might be hi highly defensive, uh, so you can soft reset just for the nature alone. Uh, everything else is gonna be same across the board. A defensive Pokemon is gonna have I defensive stat and I special defensive stat. Go, and the and the designs can be like that as well. Uh, sometimes designs can be deceiving, you know, you don't think that's going to be a fast Pokemon, but it's a fast Pokemon. You don't think that's going to be a strong Pokemon, but it's a strong Pokemon. You can make those things. And for a fire starter, maybe it's like fast and it's like physical. And for water, it's highly special attacker and stuff like that. You can change it from generation to generation, you know, you can just... You, can, you could have done that from the first generation, but you didn't do it. But right now, you have a chance. Um, and just make all Pokemons viable, that's all I'm saying, you know. If you don't want to do that, please, then give us the open world option. You know, if I pick a fire starter, don't put the first gym as rock type or don't put the second gym as water type. You know, just give me an option. Uh, I don't want to go to these two gyms. I want to go to that two gyms first. I just want to finish them first and then come back here. Why not? Uh, guys, don't get me wrong. This speculation is all about Gen 8, new generation, new star to the new console. That's, that's I think the community members agree with it. Uh, but some really want Gen 4 Remix. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big Gen 4 fan. You have no idea how much of a fan of Gen 4 I am. I love the anime. It's one of the best animes I've ever seen. Ash being the best. He has a good rival. Good Pokemon. That generation had the best champion of all time. Cynthia, you can't disagree with me that. She's strong. She's really, really good. And she's amazing as a character in the anime. And the villain group at the same time was amazing. It has the one of the most unique legendaries in Dragon and Steel. 
and two starters that have a unique typing that no one else has grass ground and water steep so don't tell me that i am not a fan i love gen 4 and all the pokemons that i love mammoth fine i like it in gen 4 electivire yeah gen 4 had that evolution magmortar my favorite starter of all time is torterra Sauraptor is my favorite bird pokemon garchomp is my favorite pseudo legendary Gen 4, man, I'm telling you, it's an amazing, amazing generation. Don't get me wrong. But, going with Gen 4 will be not a good idea, to be honest with you. Just make a fresh start. Okay, there's two versions of this. One is like, uh, this is all new. The graphic is new and everything is new. The systems are going to be new. The mechanisms are going to be new. But, if it's familiarized with the version of like Gen 4, then go ahead do that but if it's like gen 4 remakes for the same formula no one is going to be excited enough to buy a switch right well it depends on how you react but if it's like no new mechanisms have been changed it's the same formula but it's a new generation new pokemon so that's kind of like even more exciting but what i want is i want both of that except the gen 4 remix not there you know gen 8 remix with a lot of new mechanisms a lot of new graphical updates new pokemons boom go ahead i don't know it's just my opinion on things i want the starter starters to have all stats base stats across the board are uh, kind of like a total number that is going to be similar i don't want the chain system of like picking one starter having a disadvantage or stuff like that i don't want that and at the same time it's like just own open world or own you know sandbox just do these things and the game will automatically be a thousand times better than it already is and i'm not saying it's bad but it can be thousand times better that's different you know that's both are on the different fronts and uh next week i'm going to be having ideas for starters uh which are being like induce you uh as a trainer as well i don't want to see pokemon trainer Again, I just want to see certain things, which I'm making, writing a script on. So next week you will see that, and uh, or more than that, like two weeks later. I don't know. You will see it someday. All right, you will see it someday. There's a lot of things that I want to talk about this thing before we have the uh, Game Awards thing happening, or even Nintendo Direct. You know, E3 events. There's a lot of time we have. We have a lot of time to cover. So yeah, speculations are gonna be there. If you want to know more. Just subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon. Uh, you don't have to see all, all the other videos if you're just interested for this speculation thing. It's going to be happening on all Mondays. Speculative Monday, literally, is the name. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you like this video. Share the video with your friends and family. Subscribe to the channel for English Gaming. And until that point, be peculiar, stay peculiar, and just stop hosting around and hit that subscribe button. Why not? Notification icon as well, the bell, you know, just hit that bell. You know, you'll get notifications whenever you go live. You want to see this beautiful face, you know, don't you? Come on. You love the mustache, don't you? And uh, until next time, check out my other video. Hey,